Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the 2021 Chasson 720 VIP. So as we start the walk round of the vehicle, the first point you get to is your LPG point. So liquid petroleum gas and you can fit one six kilogram propane colour bottle in here. So to connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's opposite threads with it being gas, so you tighten it by hand as much as you can get it. So left hand to tighten, and then you can get a gas spanner or an adjustable wrench and nip it up that final couple of turns. Make sure the bottle is strapped in and turned off when traveling, and you can turn it back on when you arrive on your site. But always make sure for safety, when the vehicle's in motion, the gas is turned off. To lock these lockers, so it's the same on the garage, you just push the chrome catch in and then when it's facing up it's horizontal or vertical should I say it is open when it's horizontal it's locked so you'll see turn it on open turn down to lock got a gas point here so this is your external gas point so this works off the main bottle on board so should you have a awning heater or Kadak or external barbecue you get a spigot which goes in there you need some rubber orange gas hose and then some jubilee clip to connect the spigot to the hose and obviously the other end of the barbecue or heater and then you <coughs> and then you can turn on on the red top there which is your isolation top Opening and closing the doors done by this little key along with all the other lockers. So this door with it being the VIP isn't on the centre lock and it's only the cab. But your two fridge vents and your own light. The awning on this vehicle is a addition that this customer who's bought this vehicle has put on. They don't come with an awning as standard. And then behind the back wheel, it indicates that this is where your waste water is. So anything that you've put down a plug hole goes into a separate holding tank. And then you'd simply drive over a grid on the way out of your site, which is called the motorhome service bay. Pull this handle forward and it will drain out any water that's in there. So any liquid could be anything you've drained down there. Toilet. So make sure the blade is closed on the bowl of the toilet, which I'll explain when I'm inside and you'll be able to lift and slide out. Got a handle there so we can drag it to the site when it's heavy and full. Taking the grey cap off. Press the orange button and tip out at your waste disposal point which is normally behind your toilet block or beside there. Once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap, put some water in, give it a final rinse and tip out again. And if you're using the blue or the green liquid, the chemical liquid, you'd fill a cap full into here. If you're using the new form, which is the tablets, which take up less space than the two litre bottles of chemical, you put a pint of water in here by using the tap and then drop a tablet into there. That'll break up into the liquid, which is more um, environmentally friendly. And push it into the vehicle and it's good to use. In the back you've got your garage, so same lock, locks as on your gas locker. This has got the easy bed, so the easy bed can be adjusted on height and inside you've got some storage in that bottom bed. You just put your winding handle which clips on just here and you can wind this up. So should you want a bike in there, a mountain bike, you can just wind it up. Obviously it'll raise the height of the bed inside the vehicle. But what you do is it's just for when traveling you can wind that bed up to its maximum height which is about there because it stopped winding and then you can get bigger items in here you'll notice your carpet you've got some external silver screens there which are better for reflecting the heat and keeping the heat in the vehicle in the winter you've got your bed makeup cushions for the bottom bed Got a light here which will work when the main 12 volts on. Tire, tire inflation kit which is here. So it doesn't come with a spare wheel, it's a tire inflation kit. So you'll have your, your compressor and your um, foam there for filling your tire. 12 volt and 240 socket, fire extinguisher in there. And then as we come around the back of the vehicle, 
got your high level brake light and reversing camera. This is where the back panel's been strengthened to take a bike rack should you ever fit one. And if you wanted reverse sensors fitted in the future, they just go onto here, which will give it that factory look so they don't look out of place when they're on the back of the motorhome. Small door there and you'll notice you've got a vent from the diesel heater so the garage is heated by the diesel heater so you can keep spare clothes, shoes, food in there should you be going on a longer trip and it'll not go off. And then this is your Technibox locker, so this is very important. So to one side, you've got your fresh water fill up where you'd get a hose pipe. Most sites just have a brass tap, you'll need some hose pipe connection ends, hose lock ends and the, the screw on. Put your hose into there and it'll fill the fresh water tank. So wait until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel inside the vehicle. And then you've got the travel drain tap here so you can lift that up and that'll drain off from 100 litres and leave 20 litres in the tank. So that's better if you are ready to travel. Obviously it improves the consumption of the vehicle. It gives you a bit more payload so you're not going to be running overweight. You'd lift that up, put the pump on and open one of the taps inside the vehicle and that'll just squirt the water out underneath the chassis until it's down to its last 20 litres. Should you want to drain it fully from 100 litres without using this or you want to drain that last 20 litres out once you've used this, you've got to get underneath the vehicle. So if you want to do a drain down for the winter, you've got to get right underneath the vehicle. And just here is a 15 mil compression fitting. You pull that off and that'll drain off 100 litres from full or that last 20 litres once you've used the travel drain and leave no water in the vehicle. So you can, to drain it off, use the bung. And then at this side, you've got your RCD unit. So you've got your trips and your MCBs. These are the two fuses for the diesel heater. So should the diesel heater go from a solid green light to a flashing green light, it's indicating that there's a problem. So what you do is you turn it off, come out, remove the fuses, put the fuses back in, which will reset the diesel heater, then turn it on and the problem should be solved. If not, then it's a further problem that it needs to come in and be diagnosed for. And this side, you've got all your 12 volt blade fuses. So it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses with you. Got your main connection point here, so you'd get your hookah bleed, lift the collar. These vehicles are supplied with a 25 meter hookah bleed from the factory. And then you just push it on there. Always hook the vehicle up first, then the point as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead. And when unhooking, there's a small blue lever you'd push down to release the hookah bleed. If you're heating your water on gas, this cover must come off. So hand on the top, thumb in the middle, and peel it off. If it just allows the fumes out, otherwise the heater will fail as the fumes can't come out the flue. When heating the water on electric or when you're traveling, this can stay on and doesn't need to come off. You've got your external cold water feed shower point. So with the vehicle supplied, there is a hose with a trigger gun on the end, just pushes on there. As long as you've got your main 12 volt control panel on and the pump, you should get cold water only through here. So it's good for the, the dogs if they've been on the beach or your feet or the bikes. And in here, you've got your diesel filler, which opens with the main ignition key. It's a lockable diesel cap. And underneath you've got AdBlue because it's a new diesel engine. It's a 19 litre tank. When that is needed, it will come on between the temperature and fuel gauge and you simply top it up as soon as it comes on. You can buy it on the pump now or you can buy it in the drums, carry one with you and just top it up. Failing to top this up will make the vehicle go into limp mode or if it goes completely dry, if add blue, it will not start and will need to be recovered to fate so they can program it in the computer and restart it from a machine once topped back up. Tire pressures are on here, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI on front and rear. Leisure batteries are underneath the passenger seat. Engine batteries underneath the floor, underneath this compartment. And then you've got your bonnet release on the side of the dashboard. And if we have a quick look underneath the bonnet. You've 
you've got all your fluids to your left so you've got screen wash this cover lifts off and you've got power steering and radiator fluid then you've got brake fluid engine oil filler and dipstick paint codes on the front for the the blank O, which is the white so should you need a touch up pen or you need any you want any panels replaced from and resprayed in a few years that's your paint code weight plate so with chasson all the vehicles are three and a half ton from the factory unless upplated by chasson so it's three and a half ton so anyone can drive it on a standard car license the train weight is three and a half ton so what you can do is you can't get a tow bar fitted by anyone it has to go to a chasson agent and you'll get a new plate and a tow bar fitted which will state that you've got a ton weight because at the moment if you get put a tow bar on it invalidates your warranty and the police can pull you because you've got no train weight you're running illegal getting it from a dealer will mean that a chasson dealer will mean that you are road legal and you'll have a new plate and it'll not void your warranty and at the bottom you've got a build number so that's your unique number of, of, for this vehicle so if you need parts or a warranty claim quote that number HMO O and then this one 6505 you've got an earth and then if you put your key in here lift this up you've got a positive there for giving a jump start or receiving one so beside the habitation door you have your main 12 volt control panel so if you're hooked up you will have this little green light on here which indicates that you've got two 40 volt mains electric and all three pin plugs around the vehicle will work if you don't have that light on it means you're just off the 12 volt so you'll just have the 12 volt items on board which will be able to work so you've got your master switch which obviously turns your 12 volt on and off and mains electric if you're hooked up You've got your interior lights which are all then individually switched around the vehicle. You've got your water pump. So making sure you've got enough water on board which I'll show you how to do that in a second. You turn your pump on to pressurise the water through the taps, toilet, shower, exterior shower. And then you've got your owner light which is the light above the habitation door on the outside of the vehicle. And then these buttons here correspond with these buttons here. So the first one is the one of the truck which is your Ford or should I say your Fiat on this vehicle as it's a VIP engine battery so that's this one so it shows you that you've got a fully charged engine battery then you've got the one of the trailer which is the leisure battery which again is fully charged your water which is your fresh water half a tank when this goes red obviously it goes into red means it's time to refill and when that little line goes to this one down here it means your waist's open so you'd go to the back wheel on the driver's side and pull that handle to allow the waist to empty and then you've got this button here which will brighten and dim the main control panel should it be too bright for the people that are sleeping in the drop down bed at the front or should it be too dull that you can't see it top right your basto heating Obviously make sure you've got a quarter of a tank or more of diesel in the main engine tank otherwise this won't work effectively as they're on different levels to stop fuel drainage out of the main tank and you'd simply turn and start it on full power give it about five minutes before you adjust the temperature this will start the combustion a lot quicker if the lights do start flickering that's totally fine it's because it's wired through the light wiring and it's just taking such a high voltage out the leisure battery you may sometimes you may want to start the engine when starting this but you don't have to do that and when this light goes green or should I mean it's green now should it go flashing green it means that there's a fault and you would find your diesel heater fuses turn this off pull the fuses out put the fuses back in and turn it back on and that should solve the problem if not it's obviously that you haven't got enough diesel in or there is a bigger fault with the system but just simply turn on start it at full temperature and then adjust it after it starts its combustion and you've got these little rocker switch you've got lights here and you've got the little blue lights which are your night lights on the steps there so in the kitchen cupboard 
you've got your hot water controls. So this is how to heat water in the vehicle. So you've got gas, and you'll notice that the gas doesn't have 230 volts written on, it just says Truma Boiler. But the electric side says Truma Boiler AL. So I'll start with the gas first. So you've got off in the middle. With the gas, your cover's got to come off the exterior of the vehicle, otherwise the flu won't be able to allow the fumes out the vehicle and it will have a safety cutoff. So off in the middle, 50 degrees at the top, which you'd use for showering, and 70 degrees at the bottom, which you'd use for doing your dishes. And then off in the middle. So you can pick either 50 or 70 degrees on the gas. And then on the electric, you've got off in the middle, you've got one kilowatt at the top, which is equivalent to 50 degrees, and two kilowatts at the bottom, which is equivalent to 70 degrees. Of course, you can have both on together, should you be in a hurry to have hot water for showering and things you can have the gas and electric on together but you will need to have mains hook up and your gas turned on for these both to work if you want them both on together so normally you would just use the gas when while camping and you'd use the electric when you're on your site as you've paid your site fees that which includes electric and you wouldn't want to waste your gas behind the passenger seat is where you'll find your truma boiler so it, the boiler holds 10 litres of water and it's very important in the winter months you drain that 10 litres out and to do so at the front this is your water pump underneath you've got this yellow toggle tap if you lift that up like so leave it stood up on end don't put the pump on as the pump will kick in like it has then so just come in with no power on don't put the 12 volt control panel on lift this up It'll drain the 10 litres of water directly out underneath the chassis because if the 10 litres of water was to fail and freeze in the boiler it's very expensive to repair and replace the boiler and it isn't covered under any sort of warranty as frost damage is your responsibility as a user to drain off the vehicle so you'd lift this up, leave this open which will allow the 10 litres of water out open the fresh by pulling the bung off underneath the vehicle, the waist by pulling the handle via the back wheel on the driver's side, open all the taps within the vehicle, remove your shower head and then when you come to reuse the vehicle if you put the bung on the fresh water, shut the waist, shut all the taps, shut the boiler, fill with a hose pipe of fresh water, go at the cold side of the tap first when you have the pump and the control panel on, you'll get automatic cold water it'll be coming through like normal go to the hot side it will cough splutter because what it's doing is it's drawing it from the main tank which lives underneath here into the boiler pushing it up so it's pushing all the air up so, that you, so basically you're getting all the air through the taps until you get pressurized water on the hot side then you would just do every other tap and it should be much easier than the system is primed for the season but remember drain it off otherwise if you break this it's not covered under warranty and it's very expensive to repair and you do that by just lifting that up like so in the kitchen area you've got two gas rings and one electric hot plate so it's only on when you hooked up this one will work and then below you've got an oven and above the oven you've got your grill But storage in here, sorry, cutlery drawer, 240 plug when hooked up, two USBs, back bunk bed, switch, electric table and electric drop down bed switch above the lounge, which I'll get onto in a moment, those two. Storage and some more storage. Allow all of these to cool before you put the lid down, otherwise you can't smash the lid with the heat. And then this is just showing that your water pump's working and your water's getting nice and hot there. Top rate of the windows on the vehicle, press the toggles in, push out, push all the way out to bring it back in. Then you do have a fly screen which clips together like so to depart, press the two, or you have a blackout blind for on an evening. 
Across from the kitchen, you've got your tall fridge. So if you pull these two toggles back first, these are your travel catchers, so you can push them forward and back, which releases the door. And then you've got your freezer space, large storage, and your door bins on the door there. It's a flat flush panel, so you turn on and off by just pressing and holding here. And then you've got 12 volt when the engine's running. It'll, you've got gas if you're wild camping, and you have mains electric if you are on a site. To switch between there, you just press mode, but you'll notice this is on auto. Auto means it does its own thing, so you just put on auto, leave it. If I was to take the hook about now, it would switch over to gas. If I was to start the engine, it would go to the 12 volt setting, which is a feed of the engine alternator which is designed to keep the fridge at the same temperature it was when you left. So if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you're traveling from site to site, obviously your fridge will be pre-chilled before you go away. Put your, your shopping will be nice and cool because if you are at home, you put in the day before, allow it to chill. And then when, if it's on auto, it'll go automatically to the battery setting. If not, you just press mode and move that along. Temperature here, so when pre chilling, you probably want it on five, but then once you get your shopping in, you probably want to turn it down to three or four because some people do say that it does potentially freeze your shopping. That's not something you want. And then to turn on and off, just press and hold like so. So, in the washroom, you've got your toilet, so as long as your pump's on. You'll be able to press the blue button, which is your electric fresh water flush. Always flush the toilet first, as it lubricates the seal on the blade and stops the blade from sticking. And then you've got a grey lever, so you'd slide that to the right, and you'd use it with the blade open. And then after use, if you just flush, and then slide this to the left, which closes the blade, which will then allow you to get the cassette out of the vehicle should you need to empty it and on here you'll get a light when the cassette is full and requires to be emptied cleaned out and topped up with chemical got handy storage there for your toilet rolls and your toilet rolls and some more space here and then your little light for your bathroom is this side just underneath the sink and then these slide along so you've got access to some more toilet space. You've got a hanging rail for wet towels or coats. And then if you just wind this, it'll open it up, close it, and then in the corner of the right hand side you've got a little toggle which you can lock it. So just make sure it's locked before you travel. And you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind. To the other side, so this acts as the bathroom door, or you can have it as a bedroom door. And to the other side, you've got your shower screen, so these just close with a clip when traveling. You've got the same skylight with fly screen and blackout blinds and hanging rail. So this is more beneficial in the shower than it is in the toilet area because you can hang your wet coats and towels up there and let them drip dry. Remove your shower head when you winterize in and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray. As you can see there it's got quite a few kinks and loops and a loop in so any water would potentially freeze in there and leave the mixer tap open. In the back of the 7320 you do have wardrobe hanging space and some storage area and then if you lift this bunk here it's got the easy box system so it's got storage boxes underneath the bottom bunk and then you've got touch sensitive lights for both bunks when they come up down and to operate the, the electric bunk it's just in the kitchen here so it's this one here, you just bring that down, so should you need that extra bunk, you bring it down like so, and then there's a ladder which is under there, and safety nets which clip on to the frame, 
and these and they'll clip on there so you can gain access and if you've got children they'll not fall out when they're asleep. To make your smart lounge up, so you've got one on this side, one on the other side, you remove the cushions and then if you pull the black lever back, when you're pulling the seat backrest back, you'll notice you've got Isofix. So if you've got um, kids, grandchildren, you can connect their car seats to there, should they be Isofix car seats, which most of them are these days. And then in here, you've got your headrest, just clips on there and then there's two buttons you press in to release that and you'd use the backrest there and the smaller base cushion of the two which is this one in here to form a forward facing traveling seat which an adult can fit on perfectly and then on this model you do have a fifth belt option, so there's your fifth belt and these runners here, there's a full backrest in the garage which just clips on there and then again you'd use a cushion in reverse and it'd be a forward facing and a back facing seat facing each other on this side of the vehicle. To make the bed up at the front, the lower double bed, what you need to do is pull the support out for the table and flip the table over. Push it into position, so push it as far to the cab as possible, like so, and then use a switch, drop, drop it down, so you pull it over slightly so it fills the void. So, and then you've got two cushions in the garage, so one's, they're both hard backed, one hasn't got a leg on, one has got a leg on, the one without the leg at the front towards the cab, and the one with the leg on, fold the leg out by just sliding it to the left, pulling the leg out there, and then what you do is, hang, this one hangs over the table, so that's why it needs the leg to support the cushion and there you have a double bed below and then if you press the switch again you've got your electric drop down bed which so you can use this system as like a double bunk so you can stop it there ladder and nets again like the back bed and have it as a double bed above a double bed below or you can bring this one all the way down to about waist height so just pull it down like so and there it's at about waist height so it's just the right height to slide on and off the bed little buttons on the light which turn these 12 volt lights on and off and you've got storage on either side And then just behind the bulkhead on the passenger side, above the passenger seat, you've got your key here. So this is for the bed and the tables to operate the motors. So this must be turned on for the drop down beds and the electric table to work. So if you've got children that play with the switches, you can isolate it to stop them pulling the beds up and down. Make sure it's on. Make sure the lights are on on the main control panel for the beds to work as well as the wire through the lighting circuit. And then should the 12 volt fail, this cover, so take the key out, this cover lifts off and there's a winding handle supplied in your handbook bag that just winds the motor so you can wind the bed up or down in emergency should you need to. To use this skylight at the front, again like all the windows you've got to press the buttons in, so you've got four toggles to release and then you'd use this winder. And you can wind it open as much as it's above the cab you can't use it as a sunroof when traveling all skylights and windows must be securely fastened down as they are just plastic glazed windows and then at the front got a fly screen and a blackout blind for on an evening 
So now in the cab, so the VIP is based on a Fiat Ducato with a nine speed automatic gearbox. So now, so to the right of the driver, you have your handbrake. As much as it is a automatic and putting it in park will hold it. Still use your handbrake. It's because it's a serviceable item, you want to keep using it to stop it from seasoning up. So if you just use it from time to time, And you have curtains to go around the cab which are more thermal than the Remus cab blinds which are fitted as well so if you pinch and slide along you've got this on passenger and driver's door and then they just clip away and you've got your electric windows and electric mirror adjustments which are just top and bottom so two adjustments on both mirrors headlight adjustment rear fogs and this just disact this engages start stop trip computer on the end of the wiper stalk which goes through your range your traveling times your distance your, your miles covered and so on and then you've got your lights and indicators steering wheel controls and then on this side you've got off cruise control at the top and you'd get your desired speed and push up push up to accelerate pull down to, to slow down then should you have to brake you can turn it off by the brake or on the end of the stalk and then you can set it away again by the end of the stalk to the last speed that it was set at before the engine was turned off the bottom you've got speed limiter so if you go up slowly goes up in ones push and hold and it goes up in fives and then you do have kick down function on this vehicle so should it to ex avoid any incidents on the road it's got kick down so if you push the accelerator to the floor it will override the cruise con the speed limit i sorry and get you out of any potential accidents nine speed gearbox so you've got park pull down to reverse which brings on your rear view camera down to neutral down to drive and then across to manual should you wanted to intervene and go up and down the gear but you do have drive mode there as well so it comes on in the screen so you've got eco normal and power power just holds the revs and keeps it in a gear for longer so you've got that little bit more of a, a boost of power um eco doesn't do much um so i would just leave it a normal and even with normal you've got kick down so if you put your foot to the floor it'll drop a gear and it'll get itself moving traction controllers turns it on and off hill descent control with it being an automatic it just puts the engine brake on and stops it from getting away with itself hazards and then this locks the cab doors on a evening you've got to manually lock the habitation door by pushing the chrome catch in and obviously using the key with it being a VIP it doesn't come with center locking on the cab heated mirrors 12 volt for charging and USB for charging this is the USB for the head unit and you've got two cup holders glove box and another heated and cooled glove box by the air conditioning so you've got your temperature on the outside ring must be on at least one or more fan speeds for the air con to work which is this one here and then you've got where you want the air to go to so whether it's your face your feet your screen or both and whether you're recirculating air within the vehicle or you're bringing fresh air in and then as this is fitted with the connect pack it's got the accent and on the fiat it is an f270 unit so you can update these units by going on to accent finding f270 updates downloading the latest software onto a memory stick and putting it into the usb and then going further along to settings other and then you would load software but you can also see what software it's running so it's running v2.4 and you will know when it needs to be updated because it goes slow and glitchy and you'll know it just basically needs an update but on the screen there you've got navigation here so you, this is a map where we are now if you wanted to set a location and navigate to we go into the three lines in the bottom right new route address and then in the middle there you just punch in your postcode 
you do need to put a space in between the first and the space in the middle between first and the end of the postcode and then you just press go to town set as destination and it'll give you an ETA and how many miles covered in the bottom corner of when you're going to arrive or you can just have the map on you've got radio which is FM and AM DAB press list you've got all your stations you can press preset and you can save up to six on FM and DAB but you do have the shortcuts you've got home nav cam dabra dab alternative and bluetooth Click, clicking on the bluetooth what you do is you this is trying to find your phone you go onto your bluetooth go into your settings and obviously open the bluetooth on your phone that'll search for your phone and it'll connect each other and it'll just say iphone or callum's phone and you would just click pair and then should you want to use it for Bluetooth audio, there's a little music icon here. Once it's connected, you can just press that. But once you have paired with the device, it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts, just press allow and they will sync the contacts into here. And should you want your camera on when driving forward, you can just go to camera and you can always see out the back of the vehicle as a rear view camera. And then USB and iPod will work when a device is connected into the USB. GPS cards in the top. And then if you pinch and slide along. These are just magnetic. And that's how you'd black the windscreen out. And then, should it be cold, you can use the curtains as well for a little bit more of thermal insulation.